If you are thinking of becoming a Pilates instructor and you're curious as to what the training process is actually like, I am here to break it down for you. So when I first thought about becoming a Pilates instructor, I realized I really had no idea what to expect and what a teacher training program would actually look like. I started doing so much research before my training even started and I realized that I started to romanticize the idea of becoming a Pilates instructor and the idea of going through a teacher training program. So did my teacher training experience live up to my romanticized expectations? Let's talk about it. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Eileen and I'm a certified Pilates Pilates instructor from Miami. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for weekly Pilates and health related videos like this. And you can also check out all of the Pilates instructor resources I have available and up on my channel. Now, once you become certified, you're going to find that the most lucrative option when teaching Pilates is by having your own clients. I have a financial deep dive that dives much deeper into this topic, but if you have your own clients and you are wondering how instructors end up scheduling out their clients and how you would potentially schedule out your own clients, this is where Pocket Suite steps in. Now listen, as a Pilates business owner, I have done my fair share of research when it comes to platforms to make my life easier as a business owner. And Pocket Suite by far is the best scheduling app in my opinion. What I really love about Pocket Suite is that their team wants you to succeed. They want to see you grow. So what is Pocket Suite exactly? It's an all-in-one scheduling app that is designed to make your business grow by allowing your clients to book online. It's as simple as that. And while it's as simple as that, the format itself is so sleek and professional and it includes everything that you could possibly think of from payment processing to calendar syncing, which I personally love, to forms, contracts, all the fun business stuff and a cancellation policy, which we know is very important for us instructors. And I want to be fully transparent with you guys. I would not be talking about Pocket Suite if I didn't believe in their platform. I am all about making your life easier as a Pilates instructor. So yes, this is sponsored by Pocket Suite. Thank you, Pocket Suite. But I only decided to collaborate with them because I truly do believe that their platform can help you as a Pilates instructor. So if you're about to start your teacher training program and you dream about having your own clients one day, then be sure to save this info on Pocket Suite so you can utilize it when the time is right for you. The link is in the description below so you can check it out. They also have a 30-day free trial and there's a Pilates instructor option when you are signing up, which I find so cool because it makes me feel so seen as an instructor. And don't worry, if you're already an instructor and you're already seeing your own clients, you can transfer all of your client data over from any booking software into Pocket Suite. Happy booking! So now that you know the tool that you're going to be using when you are booking your own clients, what can you actually expect from your teacher training program in order to get there? Now, of course, there are so many different teacher training programs that are out there, and I obviously cannot speak to the uniqueness of each training, but I have spoken to so many instructors about their experiences, along with my thoughts on my training and all the research that I've done, and from that, I have gathered five main points that I'm going to share with you in this video. We'll start with number one, expect to be overwhelmed. Now, most comprehensive training programs are anywhere north of 400 hours, can go all the way up to, I've seen 650, 700 hours. This includes anatomy, self-practice, observation hours, practice teaching hours, study hours, but it is a lot of information that you are taking in. Most programs will have set weekends. When you sign up for the program, they're going to let you know, okay, this is going to be when we meet for level one. This is going to be when we meet for level two. And usually it's multiple days, all day for the whole weekend. And while yes, most programs have those set dates for those weekends, other than that, you are responsible for creating your own schedule to complete the rest of your hours. Those weekends alone are only going to take up a certain portion of the total amount of hours from the program, which takes us directly into number two, time management is key. So if you're working a full-time job, while going through your teacher training, which is what I did. Yes, it will be very time consuming, but it's also completely worth it in my opinion. And the time of your training is really only temporary when you look at the big picture. So while it may be overwhelming, while it may be very time consuming, view it as only a chapter in your overall Pilates career.
career book. So what my days would look like when I was going through my teacher training, I would wake up early, complete an observation hour online, typically with Pilates anytime, and then I would work my 10 to 6 job. Sometimes during my lunch break, I would also watch another observation hour online. And after work, I would head to the studio and I would typically do two hours in the studio. It was sometimes a practice teaching hour and an observation hour from another instructor teaching. It, just different combinations depending on what I was doing for that day and what classes were going on those afternoons. But generally, I was racking up about two to three hours a day, five times a week. I would also come home from the studio and study what I would practice and what I would see. And I would write out as many notes as possible, which I truly believed helped so much. The more that you write down these notes and the more that you are truly immersing yourself in your teacher training program, it goes a long way. So all that effort that you put into all of those hours, if you really, really put in that effort and you don't just say, oh, I have to get this hour done and you're observing a class, but you're thinking about something else, that is really not going to benefit you in the long run. Truly stay present through those hours and it makes such a difference once you complete your training program. Now, your weekends are also going to be consumed by Pilates aside from the teacher training weekends that the studio hosts for you. If you're working a full-time job, it's likely that your weekends are when you're going to have the most free time in your schedule to get all of those hours in. The quicker that you complete your hours, the quicker that you're going to finish the program. The length of time that it takes to complete the training is dependent on you. I did my mat training a year before I started my full comprehensive training. So not including mat, for the comprehensive training alone, it took me seven months to complete my 500 hours. Of course, you don't have to complete it in seven months if you think that that is way too much of a time crunch for your schedule. But the way I approached it was I looked at my schedule and I determined a goal month that I wanted to complete my training by. And from there, I worked backwards. I calculated how many hours I would need to complete every week in order to finish my hours by that date. And from that, I calculated from that week how many hours I'd need to do every day to meet my weekly goal. Sorry if that is confusing. You can replay that section and see if it makes sense. Now you can approach it however it works for you, but I found that this this way it really helped keep me accountable for my hours that I was doing and it helped keep me on track but feel free to schedule it out however it works for you if you don't have a set date that you want to complete your training by then it's likely that it'll take about a year to finish of course it's going to be different for everybody but for example there were other instructors in my same program who took a year and more to finish the same exact program that I did number four from all of these hours I can promise you yes you are going to be sore. Especially when you get to the level two and level three training weekends. Oh my goodness, you are going to be walking like a little penguin. But obviously it is the best kind of sore and you're going to fall more and more in love with Pilates the deeper that you get into your training. Number five, you are going to be nervous and scared to teach. And that is okay. It is natural and every Pilates teacher experiences this in one form or another, whether they want to admit it or not. The first time you begin practicing your teaching hours, you are going to be a ball of nerves. But embrace the nerves. It means that you care, first of all. I have a video on addressing teacher training nerves, so you can check that out if that is something that you're already experiencing. But use these nerves to bond with other instructors who are going through the same exact thing as you. They are going through their teacher training program just like you. You can make lifelong friendships from other people in your program because of the unique experience that you guys are sharing together. So lean on each other. Laugh it out when you feel like you're getting nervous. It's likely that you're going to be meeting with these instructors outside of the teacher training weekend so that you guys can help each other progress with your hours when it comes to observation and teaching. So lean on each other and know that it is completely normal. You are not alone when it comes to how nervous you are and those nerves will minimize over time. Let me tell you that knowledge is power and knowledge is confidence when it comes to teaching Pilates. So that actually takes me into three tips that I want to share with you that I think could be really beneficial for anyone who is going through their teacher training program. So like I said, knowledge is confidence and knowledge is power when it comes to teaching Pilates. But it's also really important to note that you should be viewing your teacher training program as a stepping stone. So yes, you've got your level one, level two, level three exercises and in your 
your program, they are going to teach you the setup, the springs, the modifications, the progressions, how to get into the exercise, how to perform the exercise, of course, so on and so forth. But now here's the thing. Your job as a Pilates teacher is to take all that information that you are learning and to break it down so that your clients understand the exercise. That is not going to be done in one session. It's not going to be done in one day. Think about how long your teacher training program is. You cannot expect your clients to learn everything in one day when you look at how long your teacher training program is. So your teacher training program is basically the first step to unlocking your potential as a teacher. It is your responsibility to keep learning. Your job as a Pilates teacher is also to take all of that information and practice it so that you know the exercises by heart. That doesn't mean that you have to perform the exercises perfectly. No one is asking you to be an advanced Pilates client and do all the exercises seamlessly and perfectly, perfect form. No, your job is to understand the exercises deep in and deep out so that you can layer that for your client's body. The better you get at understanding the exercise, the better you are going to be able to communicate with your client on what they should be doing for that specific sequence. So really once you're certified, the fun has only just begun. Be patient with learning the art of teaching and the art of cueing. It comes with time and try to view your program as really the only first 5% of your Pilates career. Learning will continue to happen over time, which takes me into my second tip very quick, but it's your responsibility to continue learning as a Pilates teacher once your training ends. Of course, there are so many continuing education courses that are out there, but no one is forcing you to do it. The NCPT is not a requirement for a lot of programs, but also understand that different programs have different ways of teaching an exercise. So if you start to take CEC courses once you're done with your training and you realize that maybe it's different from how you learned, or maybe, oh no, I, I didn't learn it like that, that's not right, that's okay. Okay, there is no set way for Pilates. A lot of different programs have different approaches. And if you realize over time that the way you learned in your training program is not the way that you agree with, it is okay to change your mind. If you find another way of teaching that same exercise that isn't how you learn, but you like that better, then it's okay to change your mind and to do that. There is no Pilates police that's going to come after you, maybe on Instagram, but in reality, just find a way to learn to be adaptive with the Pilates method throughout your Pilates teaching career. And now lastly, I just mentioned this, but the Pilates exam is not a requirement for most programs. And being NCPT certified, really, I've never been asked for my certification, but I did take the exam for my own personal reasons. So if you do decide to take the exam, which I recommend because it's almost like a very big validation into you know your stuff and it's like that stamp of approval. Oh my gosh, there's a cat staring at me, like really staring at me. I'm gonna take a picture, it's kind of creepy. I think this cat really wants to learn about being a Pilates instructor, he's listening so intently. Okay, anyways. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Okay, yes, so being NCPT certified is not a requirement. Do it for your own reasons, but it is that national certification. If you do decide to do it, you'll need 16 continuing education credits every two years to keep your certification active. And if you plan on taking the exam, my number one tip for you is to take the exam as soon as your program finishes, if you can. All the information will be fresh in your mind, and that's what I did, and it worked out great for me. So there you have it. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If I didn't go over anything that you want a little bit more detail on, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'm always here to help answer any questions you might have. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.